You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the July 3rd, 2024 meeting of the LaPorte County Board of Commissioners. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. like to call the LaPorte County Commissioners meeting Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024 at 10 a.m. Um, if we'd like to stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance and Rich. After the uh, pledge, if you'd remain standing for a moment of silence, tomorrow is Independence Day. I know it's alcohol and fireworks, but it's a day when we remember those who put on their uniform in defense of our country especially 161 years ago today when 51,112 Americans on both sides died at Gettysburg. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Gramarosa. Present. Commissioner Mrazinski. Present. And Commissioner Haney. Present. You've got a quorum. Consider agenda. Motion to approve. Madam President, if I might, might interrupt, I broached this subject yesterday. I would ask uh, uh, the board to please amend the agenda for the approval of the memorandum of the joint workshop on April 22nd, 2024. So moved. What are we doing? The memorandum for um, the workshop. They want to start doing memorandums for the workshop. Uh, Commissioner Murzinski, I researched the law and we're required to do it. Well, in that case, I wouldn't want to break the law. Yeah, I don't want you breaking the law. <laughs> uh, I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Consider approval of June 20th, 2024 minutes. Motion to approve as presented. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Consideration of claims. We'll do payroll first. Commissioners, we have payroll for the period ending 628-2024 in the amount of $1,526,648.83. Move to approve payroll as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Operating expense claims. They would be in the amount of $3,664,778.31. Move to approve the claims as presented. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Moving on to public comment. Do we have public comment? Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Uh, this is Tommy Kolovic from 1316 Ohio Street. I'm a Michigan City man. Uh, good morning to our distinguished and honorable Port County Commissioners. I think first and foremost, I want to uh, wish our Commission President, Connie Gramaros, it's been 18 months now since you've been elected as our county commissioner. I'm looking forward to your next uh, two and a half years. Well, our other, like Sheriff Heag and Prosecutor Fagan, uh, you know, we're gonna have an election come up. When you're coming back, so you may not. You know, that's why we have the election process here in the good old USA. Uh, 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 Kind of disturbing. I don't, as far as Sheriff he goes, he I think he's done just a wonderful job as our sheriff so far. He hit where there has been no no really big crises in the county up until now. I'm very disturbing in some of these reports that we've been reading from coming out from the Laporte County Sheriff's Office. 
Last month we had 22 drunk driving arrests, up from 11 last year. That being said, I'd like to kind of read a public service announcement. And kind of like you take back to the 80s, this was aired quite a bit on the South Bend TV stations back then. Um, the state of Michigan has a special offer for you. If you drink and drive, here's what you will get. You get stopped by a police officer. You get to take a, the drunk driving test, walking a straight line and touching your nose. You could lose your license for up to six months or up to a f up to two full years. You get arrested and charged with drunk driving. Your car is towed away and you get a free ride in a real police car. What do you think of drunk driving so far? Don't answer yet. You get booked, fingerprinted. You get a breath, blood, or similar test. You get your picture taken. You qualify to spend up to 90 days in jail. Yes, 90 days in jail. But wait, there is more. You get to pay fines, fees, uh, assessments, treatment costs, and legal bills, and even higher insurance rates. And best, all this is automatic, immediate, and fair. Impress your friends, your family, your boss. Everyone will know. How's that for a drunk driving law? If you drink and drive, you don't want to miss a special offer. The state of Michigan drunk driving law, and it really, really works. Available now, and all counties included. Uh, Michigan drunk driving law. It's tough. Take it seriously. <laughs> you know, I know that kind of goes back, you know, I think it resonates more now than what it did back then. You know, actually, the American Civil Liberties Union made him pull that ad off the, t off the TV and radio because they said it was too demeaning to drunk driving. Well, tough. <laughs> Uh, I just uh, want to wish you all a happy 4th of July. I want to welcome, a, I heard just Mayor Dermody say on Community Folks is that Governor Holcomb's going to be here. I always love seeing God. I think he's a great guy. You know, a lot of people in Michigan City, we have kind of a relationship. You know, we had the Elston Red Devils. He's also a Red Devil. He's from Indianapolis Pike High School, Red Devil High School. Really nice school. I've actually been there one time. I just want to thank you all. I remind everybody the smoking carbon monoxide detectors save lives. And, uh, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Have a safe 4th of July, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you. You can follow that? I'll try. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Steve Hollifield, 6782 East Winter, South Mill Creek. I just want to give a shout out. There's been a lot of complaints going on about the job done, paving the roads out in Fish Lake. I think they did an outstanding job. It's been 40 years since those roads were paved. The people are complaining about a little gravel, a little bit of grass. I think they did an outstanding job. It needed to be done. Thank you. And also to Cherry and her crew for fixing the hole at 200 South and 500 East. Uh, now we come around that corner, we don't have to worry about losing our loads and that and everything else. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I'll give them a shout out as well. I mean, they've done a wonderful job. We, um, we've gotten a lot of folks calling the commissioner's office, calling me personally and thanking me. Um, Mike Seitz lives out there and it was something that really needed to be done. So we're really trying to hit that list of, of the roads that really need to get done. And, you know, again, I would urge anyone out there watching this, if you have a road that needs fixing, um, no guarantee that we can run out there and we can get it fixed right away, but we will definitely put it on a list and it's something that we'll, we will be addressing. There's a lot of roads out there that we're unaware that um, they have problems. So please do call the highway department, let them know so that we can get these roads fixed. Thank you. Can I add one more thing? Sure. I just thought of it. County, County Road 800 East, south of State Road 4, almost to 525 East. Okay. I don't know what they're going to do with that, but there's got to be a plan of some sort. They've raised it up quite a bit. But it is rougher than a bejeebus. It is just terrible. If they, now, I hate to say the word terrible, but if I'd like to know what their plan is for that because a lot of people are complaining about that end of it. So go right ahead and call up the Highway Department, Charity, or Andrew, and, and we'll figure something out. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Public uh, comment. Do we have anyone else for public comment on Zoom? No. Okay. We're going to close public comment. Department heads, department head comment. Darlene Hale, Laporte County IT Director. Um, just to follow up on, on the previous comments from Mr. Hollifield, Charity and I have been working together and I know you're involved, Connie, um, with a website that people can actually, you know, 
go online and submit a pothole or whatever and we're trying to get the whole GPS thing working with it so that you know they can tag it and then it will go directly to um, County Highway so they can assign it and then you'll get emailed back you know whatever it's done to fix it so that's coming in the future thank you thank you I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to put the pressure on you guys <laughs> Uh, good morning, um, Mike Seitz, uh, Office of Community and Economic Development. I'd like to give you a little update. We, uh, as you might well know, we started a uh, joint task force with St. Joseph County and LaPorte County elected officials and, and uh, also New Carlisle officials to work on uh, the housing situation um, that's going to uh, happen here in LaPorte County and St. Joe County with the uh, development of the New Carlisle area. We've had two meetings uh, so far. Uh, um, New Carlisle has been gracious enough to let us use their, their city hall for, for meetings. Uh, the first meeting they even uh, provided breakfast, so I think we'll, we might have to follow up with that. But uh, we've been really busy in that area. We've um, sent out uh, 23 letters to uh, major property owners uh, inquiring if they have any interest in, de in developing their land uh, uh, into uh, ho housing development projects. We've also uh, visited housing development uh, projects. We also have um, got unbelievable excellent uh, cooperation out of the building department. We've identified all the, um, uh, the housing uh, uh, developments and we're tracking how many uh, housing uh, development lots have been sold, which will give us a balance of if it's platted for 100 and there's 50 been, been sold or 50 building permits and we know we've got 50 vacants. We're taking an inventory of that so we know how many uh, housing units that we have available and um, oh, we have a, another meeting scheduled for July uh, the end of July um, after fair week and uh, so um, but it's going real well and and I think the, the the thing that I really impresses me a lot is the eagerness that we have from the folks at St. Joseph County um, and, and, and New Carlisle to work with us. Haven't you felt that rich when in the meetings that, that, that they uh, really want to work with us and, 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 and we'll come out with a good uh, uh, after for housing? Um, we also um, are looking at uh, the possibility of uh, running uh, uh, water and sewer uh, into Laporte La County and uh, we're providing uh, the information. Mitch Bishop has been very helpful with that, uh, identifying where the uh, the uh, water lines and sewer lines are going in the county. So uh, a lot of activity going on in that area. So I just wanted to give you an update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Andy Skiat with LaPorte County Project Management. I'm here with uh, LaPorte County Facilities Director Cheryl Latinsky. Um, I'm here to speak to you on behalf of the HVAC system at the complex that we've discussed in the past two workshops. Um, so Councilman Karanka has been kind enough with his engineering background to assist us in looking through some of the old drawings and the as-built drawings. Um, one of the things he noticed was the existing uh, set points of the system, the leaving water temperature the chillers is currently four degrees above uh, the requested or the the set the settings recommended on the drawings from uh, 2001 in there someplace um, I did speak with him this morning and obtained his permission to come up here and and request the Commission's approval um, on behalf of those discussions to ask if we could work with Doug Newland from your HVAC um, Department and maintenance to see if we could get him to change those set points to four degrees lower to make sure the leaving water temperature is what it was specified to try to get the most out of that existing system but we weren't comfortable obviously making any alterations without Commission approval I think it's a good idea. Nobody knows that system like Doug, and I don't know 
how it got that way. We, we're learning a lot about our <laughs> system yeah. and our past uh, people, but uh, I, I would uh, say permission to do whatever, whatever you and Doug deem necessary to try to nurse this system along. So we have a motion. Well, I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second discussion. I would just like to say, um, I understand that we're going to try to do different things and changing a setting for degrees is really, to me, you know, I can agree with this, but there's an elephant in the room and I know we had the workshop yesterday about this. There um, has been suggestions to buy dehumidifiers for a quick fix and everything else. But we have to address the elephant in the room, and that is that there is a 200-ton cooling system that is no longer in the complex. Um, it's not on our drawings. Adam Karanka is online right now on, on Zoom, and he did speak to that. We have to figure out what we're going to do. We can do all these little fixes but it's not resolving the big issue. So um, with that being said, we can call a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, I think we know what we need to do, what we should do. We've come too far now. We've got so much in this building, we can't back up. We can't Band-Aid things anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we just got to figure out how we're going to be able to do it because it's not going to be cheap, you know, but um, so we we've already got so much money in this building, we we can't band-aid this one. It's but <laughs> where does it stop? Where next, does it stop? Next yeah. issue. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Um, we're looking at eighteen to twenty-four months and quite a bit of money to before we can get things where they should be. In the meantime, we do need to get that band-aid rolling. So I would make a motion to authorize our maintenance department. Uh, uh, Ms. Listinski to uh, pick up four uh, dehumidifiers in the 4,500 to uh, 5,500 square foot range at approximately uh, $200 each uh, to start testing on one floor to see if that will knock down the humidity on at least floor five. And um, hopefully it will, and then we can expand out to the other two floors, um, at least as something to get us through until we're actually able to. There's a lot of technical work that needs to be done before we can fix this system. and do something to at least knock down the humidity for now that's not a massive expense. Well, that's something that was discussed yesterday and, mm -hmm. and I, well, would you like to second that motion? Well, I'm concerned about that. Number one, we don't know how much heat they make. Number two, we don't know how much noise they make. And number three, you're going to have to dump the water regularly. Our maintenance staff is already under under uh, staffed. Um, who's going to be going up and dumping the water you know, on a regular basis? Uh, I don't know. I I didn't care for the idea when I first heard it, and the more we talked about it, the less I thought about it. I I don't I don't know that that's a solution. I, I we could be asking for more trouble than we have already with the noise, the heat, and dumping the water. Yeah, we're just well, I, adding more heat to the to to the problem, the existing problem. So, you know, the the units we talked about in the workshop are commercially, basically household type units. Um, once we looked at and, and feel free to price check them anywhere. I simply brought up the one at Costco because they're 180 bucks and they do 4,500 square feet. Um, they've got the contained buckets as well as hoses. If we can position a couple of those next to drains, which I believe we can up there, at least two or three of them. So we have a motion um, on the table. Do we have a second? No. No. There's These things no really second. don't produce a we'll lot of heat. On to the next. Um, for for what it's worth, Commissioner Gramero said there's. I that we've got 18 to 24 months we really need to do something to knock down the humidity and well, i know you're opposed to band-aids for the elephant in the room but at the same time it would be session? nice to do something we we're ready to move on to the next item do we continue to ignore the problem second please feel free continue the next issue um so that that was all i wanted to bring was the to request to lower the set point so thank you for approving that okay. um the second issue i didn't know if i should speak on or if or if you would like cheryl to start would be the uh, water event that occurred at the animal shelter on june 23rd 
So this is a continuation, and I mean, if you want to come up, but this is a continuation from our workshop yesterday, and what we're um, what we're trying to do is come up with a solution. We we all ten members spoke about it at the workshop, so now we're going to come up with a proposal. So please continue. Um, so we were notified by Cheryl, the facilities director for building maintenance of the issue. Um, so we came on site on that Sunday, um, that Sunday, and into the early evening and then also Monday we did some initial mitigation work, um, removal of drywall, removal of cabinets, removal of countertops. Um, all the breakers in the panel were saturated so we replaced all the breakers in the panel. Um, we did replace some lights, remove some insulation, um, strip some FRP from one of the holding areas for the animals. Um, so we took care of that based on visual inspections and uh, moisture readings with the meter. Um, then I, I followed up that week. Uh, I met on site with Travelers Insurance, uh, the county's adjuster. Um, he thanked the Port County leadership for their quick action um, in getting that work uh, mitigated right away. Um, he said that that obviously would everyone could assume, including him, that that saved more work in the long run and possibly a total gut. Um, he had then asked uh, if there could be a scope of work provided for him um, with some initial costs, and then if that was sent over, uh, then he could look to get that approved for the county, and the county could move forward at their discretion. So at the workshop, we discussed um, the opportunity maybe for our firm since we we're involved in the mitigation um, to do that scope of work with the subs that we used on the annex um, we would we would price that scope of work um, a budget and the scope of work and then present that to the commissioners and to travelers for the county leadership to work with your carry and determine the appropriate steps forward from there yeah it's an amazing job you guys have been doing out there that that Sunday morning 7 12 a.m. <laughs> get a call from Eric so I went out there and they had all the electricity shut off, and I was just absolutely amazed when I went in there. It looked like it had been hit. I mean, it just with the ceiling tore open and caved in, water all over the floor. Uh, what a mess. But uh, I called Cheryl. Within an hour, we had six guys out there, six dedicated guys that were going crazy working, getting it cleaned up, getting the poor cats that got wet and moved out of there. Uh, amazing job as always. Thank you. And just so the record, um, Mr. Mrzinski was out there because he is the liaison to um, that department. So we spoke about this. We know we need a scope of work. Um, we spoke about this in great lengths yesterday with the 10-member board. Um, do we have a motion to, to send this out to to have them do a scope of work yes but, uh, and then this would not be to actually do the project this is just to get a scope of work um of what it's going to take to put it back together and then once we get that scope of work then we can send it out to bid and we can figure out or what we're going to do what our next step is but so at moved. this point it's just for the scope of work isn't um wasn't the insurance adjuster supposed to be uh, coming out there to determine all the everything that was damaged and he did do come all out. that. And Guy DiMartino uh, worked with him, but the insurance company threw it back to Guy DiMartino to get the scope of work, and that was discussed yesterday at the workshop. I, I personally met with the adjuster, Commissioner Haney, mm -hmm. and what the commissioner asked for. So we did like the initial mitigation. Um, there's still some insulation. There's still some wall material that needs to be removed um, for the county's protection on their behalf. I asked him uh, directly if it would be allowable or recommended to get an industrial hygienist on site just to make sure all the mitigation was a thorough enough appropriately because there is animals and there is staff there you know what I mean um, so he said that he he I, I don't know what exactly what he said not to good idea but agreed you know I mean that I don't remember his term specifically sure. but he agreed and then I asked if the industrial hygienist should be one that was recommended by travelers or if the county could retain the industrial hygienist and the staff that they used on on the water loss here he said it would be 
absolutely fine for the county to use their preferred industrial hygienist. And then if we would get with that firm and the insulator, the plumber, and then determine the appropriate scope of work once we did further uh, investigation to see if additional mitigation was required, see if the cabinets can be reused, if they're ruined, see if the countertop can be reused, if we would put all that together in a report and then provide that to him with those prices, then he would work with the county council, legal counsel on approval. So the document I sent this morning, I apologize for that coming this morning. I wasn't sure on the pass forward till the workshop last night. What that document would be would be to uh, recover our mitigation costs that were performed on the emergency and then the fees for like our firm, the industrial hygienist, the plumber to come out there, do what we need to do to see if we need to do more mitigation, write a scope of work for the necessary repairs, come up with a budget and then provide it to the county and travelers for you to proceed afterwards. I, I just want to make sure we're not duplicating any services between what the insurance company is going to provide and what I, we're doing. I was there myself personally, and he asked me to provide all those documents for him. Okay. All right. Thank you. A second. So we have a motion on a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Happy 4th. Thank, Thank you. you. Independence Day. There's trouble. Hi. So Good first morning. I'll address the 800 East. Um, that road was prone to flooding. So with the Fish Lake Community Crossings, we took the millings from there because it was close and built that road up so it wouldn't flood anymore. Um, it's a work in progress. Not sure exactly what we're going to do with it yet. I will send the grader out there to grade it if it's really rough. Um, but like I said, it's a work in progress. So. Um, the Community Crossings, Fish Lake, thank you for that also. Um, it, we have a few things to touch up, the edges where we burn, some of the yards need fixed, but it is completed and paid for and it came in $22,544 on the budget. This is the first community crossings program that had no overages, so we're really happy about that. And Mitch has went and got the um, commitment letter for next year's community crossings which the state now is gonna match 1.5 million instead of 1 million. And so we have 16 miles of road plan for the community crossings next year. And I just want to mention uh, quick, the Johnson and 400 West Road is close to being open, the new road we're building. Um, since I've been at the highway 17 years, this is the first time I think we actually built a road from scratch ourselves in house. We put a lot of work into it. It's taken a lot of time. Um, we're currently moving some guardrail over and we're gonna have Reith Rally come and pave the approaches to Johnson and then the turn lane off of Johnson onto 400. Not sure exactly if we're gonna put some um, binder on it for the year to let people drive on it or what, but it's gonna be open here pretty soon. So that is- The firemen gonna, will love you for that. Yes. So <laughs> and quit calling me. We've been working on that a long time. Good, yes, good job. And you know, the idea that you guys came, not just matched it and came at the number that you had designated for community crossings, but the fact that you came under is amazing. Last year was the highest we had ever been. Um, and now under your direction, we have come under that. And that just really is a testimony of what a great job you're doing in that position. And I thank you. Well, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you guys. Department heads, any other department heads? Good morning, uh, Brian Beach, Assistant Administrator for EMS. Um, so with public safety, um, mental health becoming more prevalent for us, uh, we've been looking into a peer support team. We've been working with uh, the Sheriff's Department and E911. Um, been having some monthly meetings with Michigan City PD and Michigan City Fire as well as they're starting to get their teams together as well. Um, we're just uh, letting you guys know that we're just trying to get a team together um, and work together within the county between the Sheriff's Department, EMS, and E911 to try to form our own teams and then kind of collaborate as, as one team. Um, we got some pricing on, on a training from a local clinician who's willing to be a part of the team at her own cost, just going to be initial cost initially for the training. Um, she'll train up to thirty people, and it was thirty or it was three thousand dollars. So we're looking to at how we're going to go about the funding as well for that. So currently, do you have it in your budget? 
we don't have anything in there for that at this time. Okay, so. I give you, make a motion to give you permission to go to the council to seek funding. Absolutely, sounds like a great plan, second. So we have a motion and a second for um, EMS to go down to the council and ask for funding. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other department heads? Will be clear. Madam President, I have uh, I have something. Um, Commissioner Brzezinski brought it up earlier, some of our uh, staffing issues with the maintenance department. Um, I'm curious, uh, do you know uh, how many uh, how many employees we've had uh, either terminated, resigned, uh, written up, or forced to resign in since the beginning of this year in maintenance? I, I don't micromanage departments, so I wouldn't know. Do you have that number? It's quite a few. Um, I appreciate the fact um, you say you don't micromanage. I, uh, it's come to my attention you've been in uh, several of these uh, meetings where folks have been several meetings of maintenance employees where you, they've been demoted and or terminated or forced to resign. And I'm curious as to uh, why you're putting so much effort Mr. into Are we talking about our, personnel issues at, at an open meeting? We're not talking about individual personnel. We're talking about That's departmental issues. That's what it sounds issues. like to me. Talking about departmental issues, the issue here is the our maintenance department seems to be uh, being absolutely gutted. We're losing people with years and decades worth of service. Um, they're being forced to resign. They're being terminated. They're being demoted. They're having a pay can, cut. They're being written up for no reason. About, I mean, here we go again. You know, the same old thing. We we use. We have certain individuals that come here and use this for political reasons. You have every opportunity to have this discussion outside of a public meeting, but you want to showboat. Um, no, we, we, we have to discuss this in a public meeting. We where where have, else would we discuss we, it? The same way we had executive sessions for over a month to determine some issues that we had at the beginning of the year with the department. If you have a problem with one of the departments, we can have those executive sessions and then we can have the discussions. Did we About not have those thing. discussions in I, January? I'm so sorry. I, I, Madam President, may I speak? Sure. Thank you. Commissioner Haney, Madam President, Commissioner Mrzinski, I don't want to thwart any elected official that has been voted by the public to be sitting where you're sitting from speaking. I don't want to do that. I, and respectfully, Commissioner, Commissioner Haney, the problem we have in speaking about employee issues is when we bring up, and I use this kind of loosely, accusations or motives, I don't know if that's appropriate in a public meeting because Robert's Rules of Orders, we're supposed to be conducting business, but some of those comments could lend to in defense of those allegations or comments could lend to breaching confidential employee information. That's my concern. So for any allegation, there are reasons for those that we need to uh, protect the employees that might not be public information. And I don't want to get this county in trouble for discussing those issues. So I'm not trying to thwart your free speech or anything. I would ask that we take this offline. Maybe we could have an administrative meeting, which is public technically, or an executive an executive session uh, that would not be public if it fits one of the criteria. I'm not prepared to say if it does or doesn't at this point in time. I would just, I don't want to be disrespectful to any one of you, but I just ask that we take this offline now. I, I appreciate that. I'm not, I'm not trying to bring, bring up any specific individual employee. It's just with the number of folks who are leaving, plus the the expressed desire that that, that we've heard from the council and commission, uh, from Commission President uh, Gramarosa as well as Council President Novak of privatizing our maintenance there department. There has been no talk of privatizing. Where did we talk about privatizing? So again, another okay. accusation, a political accusation that he's throwing out in a public meeting. And, and Facebook. And and and. and, and well, and again, not, not, not young, here's a gentleman media. who you doesn't might. show up to work until three o'clock in the afternoon, is not around all day long to do county business, and then he misses out when department heads are coming in and out of the commissioner's office, and you want us to discuss everything that's discussed all day long when you're wherever you are at. You realize discussing that. I'd like to call a five-minute meet. A five-minute recess. Law, right? I like to call five minutes. And you reasons. show up. You haven't been Why here in like a month. How would Why you even know who's here? Yes, second. We have a motion for a five minute recess. All right, well, I'll take it over five minutes. Uh -huh.
conversation with President Gramarosa and uh, Monique Thomas, our Human Resources Director. I would just encourage any commissioner, if there's any issues with any department, in this case, uh, building maintenance, to contact the department head or- Recording in progress. Or Ms. Thomas. You might want to go back in okay. and start that again. Okay, to all the folks listening in and for posterity's sake, because this is being recorded, I was just, uh, this is Scott Page, county attorney. I was just advising the commissioners I did uh, during our recess speak with President Gramarosa and Monique Thomas in the hallway. And after discussion, I'd just like to advise all commissioners that you're always welcome to contact any department head or Monique Thomas, uh, our human resources director, uh, for any employee related issues. What I'm afraid of this disintegrating into is that for every disgruntled employee or ex-employee that has a complaint, there's a response because people are reprimanded and there are repercussions and I'm saying this generally because we're not talking about specific employees. We can't have people sleeping in closets. We can't have people not showing up on time. We can't have people just taking off willy-nilly. And we need people to show respect to this commission and to our department heads. So I'm not casting accusations, but there is a reason for things. And now is not the proper time to speak about it. And I'm just trying to keep the peace and maintain civility here. I understand each commissioner has strong opinions about our different departments. I get it. But I would just ask if we could please take this offline and speak directly to the department heads or Monique. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. Thank you, Mr. Pacek. I appreciate that. I did attempt to speak to our uh, director of uh, facilities um, and the answer she gave was we decided to go in a different direction. That was, quote, the only response from her. She seemed uncomfortable in wanting to discuss it with me, which was fine, and I, I didn't pursue it further. Um, we obviously know the culture of retaliation here we've seen. Um, I know we're not sure about the total number of people who are gone from maintenance, but uh, Commissioner Grimmers, can you tell me how many how many uh, individuals and write-ups have you been present with when they, uh, of, and demotions and or terminations have you been physically present at when these have happened with the department, with uh, maintenance? I want to answer that. All right. Uh, one further question then. How many of your relatives have been hired by LaPorte County and or facilities since the beginning of this year in replacement of those positions of people who have been let go? You're not willing to say the number? I have no relatives. Your wife worked for the county and you bypassed HR. Not me. She and worked you for went elections. directly to the auditor's office and had them hire her. Nope. So stop no that is not, not true we what are moving on she are there any other department us. heads you don't if want to, you not we'll be closing had department on. heads nephews cousins would count no all right we're closing well, department I, head I just comments want to make sure it's on the record on. we have no request being decimated and we have a month or two when they come back business. and try and privatize it no you old know, business. This was retaliation and to done to absolutely. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll our second. Department. All those in favor say aye. 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 Corruption County rolls on.